Akka Mahadevi. This is a story of a revolutionary poet, saint and mystic, a sincere devotee of Lord Shiva and the first woman to have composed simple devotional poems called vachanas in Kannada literature. The vachana or speech is a compilation of devotional poems in praise of Lord Shiva that possesses musical and emotional quality. They contain profound philosophy and thought-provoking ideas that are meant to purify a person in word, action and vision. Her contemporaries who belong to the Veera Shaiva movement were Basavanna, Siddharama and Allamma Prabhu who conferred on her the honorific term Akka meaning an elder sister. Akka Mahadevi was born in a village called Udathadi in the present day Shivamogga district of Karnataka, India. She was raised in a spiritual atmosphere by her parents Sumati and Nirmala Shetty who were ardent devotees of Lord Shiva. Even as a child, Mahadevi showed great interest in spiritualism and accepted Chennamallikarjuna that is Lord Shiva as her mystical spouse. Once the local king Kaushika, charmed by her beauty, asked for her hand in marriage. She refused at first, but later was forced to protect the honor of her parents. She expressed that the king would neither touch Akka Mahadevi without her permission nor hinder her worship. However, when Kaushika failed to honor the agreement, Akka Mahadevi left his palace, leaving behind all his presents, including her clothes and acknowledged Lord Chinnamallikarjuna, that is, the Lord white as a jasmine, as her sole husband. Liberated from her domestic life, Akka Mahadevi travelled in search of her beloved Chinnamallikarjuna to the region of Kalyana, the then capital of the Western Chalukya dynasty in the present-day Bidar district of Karnataka. Kalyana was the residence of eminent saint poets of the Veera Shaiva sect such as Basavanna and Allamma Prabhu. At Anubhava Mantapa, the place where Sharanas who followed the Veera Shaiva faith discussed spiritual, social and philosophical questions, Akka Mahadevi met these personalities. At first, her nakedness, which comprised of only her long tresses that covered her body, horrified the people who considered it sacrilegious for her to roam naked. Although it was common for realized souls, irrespective of their gender, to have no sense of bodily attachment, she was considered an impudent woman by the people to abandon her modesty. She was accosted by Basavanna, founder of the Anubhava Mantapa, but its president Allamma Prabhu tested her. He asked, Why have you come here in the prime of your youth? Our saints resent the sight of a young woman. If you can disclose the identity of your husband, you can join the fellowship of our saints or you can depart. A woman's company is like poison. Tell us who is your husband. Mahadevi replied, I was engrossed in penance for many years so that God might become my wedded Lord. The entire world knows that innumerable saints have been my parents. Therefore, O Prabhu, God is my Lord and there are no husbands in this world. Allamma Prabhu scolds her first for her nakedness and then for covering her nakedness with her long hair. He further questions whether Mahadevi can be one with God when she still has a human form. She replied in her simple and crude way, When the heart is rendered pure by the grace of Chennamallikarjuna, of what use is it if this mortal body turns dull and dark or if it is blith and bright? The bodily condition is of no consequence. Even if you slay me, I will never cease to love God. Allamma Prabhu was touched by her Madhura Bhakti or loving devotion towards Chennamallikarjuna. He complimented her that her mind was merged with God. After tackling a series of questions posed by the members of the Anubhava Mantapa, Mahadevi emerged victorious and was honoured with the title Akka by the Sharanas and accepted into their fold. 
Despite her acceptance and respect by the Sharanas, Akka Mahadevi continued her spiritual journey in the search of divine. In the first phase of her life, Akka Mahadevi renounced all worldly objects and attractions. In the second, she discarded all object-based rules and regulations. In the third and final phase of her life, she began her journey to the temple of Chennamallikarjuna in Sri Sailam of present-day Andhra Pradesh. Her spiritual journey ended at Kadali, a thick forest in Sri Sailam where she attained Aikyasthala, the highest of the six states of Lingayat philosophy with her beloved Chennamallikarjuna. Om Namah Shivaya